Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Between Two Friends. Today, I have with me Jordan Stupar. Jordan is not only a friend, but a longtime client, which has been quite a journey. Uh, now he has launched Stupar Sales Academy, and it's just really fun uh, to see him with the shackles off, which we'll explain what that means. And uh, thanks for jumping on with us today. First, just just tell us a little bit more about you. Well, great to be here. I appreciate that. And yeah, it's been a, been a long time knowing you and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. And, and uh, obviously, I'm sure we'll get around to how you've been able to help me. Um, but yeah, my background, um, I'm born and raised in Wisconsin. I obviously met you down there in Miami when uh, I was living down there and opened up my first business. And uh, I've just, uh, I'm a sales guy through and through that um, decided to scratch an entrepreneurial itch and uh, have probably just like most people learned a lot of things the hard way. Tell us, are you selling to salespeople now or are you selling to business owners? I mean, what, you know, what exactly is your focus? Um, I do both, honestly. Um, the, the thing that I have a lot of attention on right now, kind of, um, I think I'm in my sixth week now of kind of relaunching this business. Um, the first time around, obviously, I had to create a product. Um, most of what I do is online sales training and skill development. So I had to shoot all the content, so on and so forth. And so while I was doing that, um, I had a lot of attention on leveraging my social media following to gain an audience, build the audience, and then of course, monetize that audience. And this time around, I'm working on creating all of the marketing funnels and just the, all, all the online assets for individuals to go ahead. If they're interested in the content, they want to learn more and they want to become a client they can easily do that without uh, much of my um, time or attention. And then, of course, what I'm doing right now, starting really next week, is I'm going to be spending probably about 80, 90% of my time um, going after uh, businesses, small, medium businesses to start off with. So um, that way, I can kind of have more of an automated, more of a marketing approach towards uh, individual salespeople, sales managers, so on and so forth. And then uh, using a little bit more of my actual sales skills to generate uh, larger accounts uh, with, you know, small and medium businesses. When I, when I met you, you were kind of in your, uh, at your peak as a salesperson, right? But working in another business and correct. And then now you're running your own business. So what, you know, what's, well, what, what's the difference for you and what do you like and maybe not like about it? I, I embrace, I think all of the things about entrepreneurship. I think when, when I look back being a salesperson, there's really not a lot of risk involved. Um, the only thing that you really have to do is obviously do your best, work hard, uh, connect with as many people as you can, and obviously provide them with enough value uh, for them to do business with you. And so I excelled at that and I kind of figured out the sales game uh, after becoming you know, a top 1% income earner and crushing sales and being the top salesperson at the company I was at, um, I decided to branch off and start sharing um, some of the things that I was doing and some of the techniques that I was um, implementing to increase my own income and become a top salesperson. And so, you know, creating that business, obviously, I mean, just uh, little basic things like implementing a payment gateway onto a website is, is something that you have to learn and editing videos and, um, you know, just uh, policies and procedures and contracts. I know that you obviously do lots of those types of things. And those things are unbelievably important um, in business is to have policies and to have contracts and agreements in place that uh, not only obviously can protect you as the business owner, but just your assets and what you're trying to build. So um, it's definitely been, um, you know, waking up in the morning, getting kicked in the face and uh, trying to figure out what to do differently. So I'm not going to say I really enjoy that aspect, but I really enjoy um, looking back now, three years of, uh, of business experience, um, I've learned an absolute ton and I'm grateful for that. So, I mean, there's a lot, lots to unravel there, but I really enjoy when somebody like the light bulb goes off, right? Cause you can be really good at doing what you like to do, which is sales. But that, like you said, there's no risk involved because you're still making sales and making money, but you're not running the business. So then when somebody finds out how hard it is or just how much there is to run a business because a business needs 
you know, I used to think 10 hats, but really it's more like 50. So you're basically yeah. wearing, you're the CEO, the CFO, you're everything when you start everything. the business until you start getting help. And, and those are, those are different things. And it's a totally different challenge. And to me, what, what's interesting, what I want to ask you about is, you know, I say this all the time because, because I'm, you know, own a law firm when you're a good lawyer and then you go out and, and you try to build a law firm, your focus has to be on being a business owner, not being a good lawyer. So then you have to go from doing the legal work to, to handing it off so that, so that you can, you know, learn how to do all these other things. Like if you start a law firm, you have to learn how to do marketing and sales. If you're a sales guy, you're already doing sales. So it's like you're making sales and, and then who's filling in the back end, you know, like what, 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 and I think that's why you mentioned policies and procedures. Cause if you don't have them in place, you're going to make a bunch of sales and then not be able to deliver. So I guess for you, it's almost like the opposite. Lawyers have to learn how to be business people and sell and market. You have to learn how to deliver and have policies and procedures. That's a hundred percent correct. I mean, it, it, it's, I'm, I'm really quick to market. I can go out and I can sell stuff and get people onboarded, but then what is the onboarding process? And, you know, if somebody wants a refund, do you actually have a policy that's, that's fair and can protect your business and also cancellation policies and, uh, you know, SAS, you know, definitions. And there's just a lot of different things that I struggled with right off the get-go because I can go and generate revenue and get customers. But, you know, again, are there contracts, policies, and agreements in place? Wait a second. I needed an agreement, an operating agreement? What? What's right. the point of that? Like, I just want to get customers and make money. But um, I think, uh, you know, you get slapped in the face quick enough, you're, you, you figure out how to, to adjust. Yeah. Well, the good ones do, right? Or, or the people that are <laughs> yeah. And you're, you know, at the beginning of your journey. So what, what's next for you? It's been a couple of years. I've had to uh, work on plan B, plan C, and plan D, uh, you know, kind of biding my time to get through a... Uh, a non-compete issue that I had with a former employer. Obviously, you know all about that. Yeah. Um, so right now, you know, just kind of six weeks into really relaunching this business. And honestly, I'm just really thankful uh, to be doing this business. Um, I'm not entirely sure what exactly is next. I'm sure there'll be something on down the road that I'd like to get my get my hands in. So, so listen, you, you mentioned briefly the non-compete and um, you know, there are parts of, of business that aren't fun. And as I, as I tell people, if you're in business at some point, you're going to get into a lawsuit. Like it, it's almost inevitable. It's going to happen. We try to keep people out of the courtroom. So our litigation team is, is phenomenal. Um, but our, our like message and our goal and where a lot of our growth has been working with business owners, trying to help them avoid the courtroom. Cause in court, it's a crapshoot. When, when you go in front of a judge or a jury, you, you just never know. We, we, we've won things that, that we didn't think we we're going to win. Um, a lot more wins and losses, but, but when you lose, you're like, you know, sometimes you see it coming, but other times like, how did that happen? And then, you know, but in terms of the emotional part of, of a lawsuit, you know, if, if you'll just kind of like open up a little bit about that. And it, look, I've talked so many people out of lawsuits. It's, it's not even funny. I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. I'll make money. You won't. It's not worth it, but it's yep. not always possible. And the reason is for, for experiences like this sometimes. I mean, the emotional side of, of a lawsuit, just getting served is, is kind of just a weird thing. I remember answering my door in my condo in Miami at like nine o'clock at night. And some guy just like, hit me with this like 900 page, like brick of paper. And he's like, you've been served. And just then it's like this little kind of uh, fight or flight kind of mode just, just hits you. You, you try to page through things and you know, I'm a semi-intelligent person. My sister's a, a business attorney down in Chicago. So like I get subjected to some of the legalese and some of the terms um, but I don't understand what they mean. I'm just a normal guy. And so you're trying to make sense out of what's going on. And so there's just this constant, you don't really know where you're at. You're uh, relying heavily on your attorney to, you know, communicate to you what's going on, you know, and um, just from an emotional standpoint, you know, thinking about those things, um, it's draining. And then from the standpoint of, you know, possibly being limited uh, to what you can do, what you can say, um, you kind of feel censored in a way. Um, it's just a, a, an extremely draining process. Every single day throughout a lawsuit, when you're waking up and you try to put 100% of your attention on your business and you know the creativity that it takes and just the attention that it takes, 
being in a lawsuit is going to take up 20, 30, 40, 50% of your attention just on the back burner of that it's, that it's there. And so it just from an emotional and attention standpoint, it is extremely exhausting and very draining. So um, it's tough to fight through. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that part because that's, that's the part that people don't get. Eventually, yeah. you're going to get litigation fatigue. You're just going to get tired. You're going to get fed up. And all of that emotional energy you could be spending you could be spending building your business is put on just just garbage a lot of times and it's yep. frustrating and it just it affects everything around you so um but people don't really get the fact that in the civil court system right which is business to business people suing each other over money it's still the, the people with the most money is going to win I, I learned this the hard way early on when um we we uh sued uh, a very famous um band and we were right but the amount of money that it took to defend and to get there. And ultimately we, we won on appeal in the 11th circuit of federal, which is, you know, just shy of, of, of uh, the United States Supreme court. I was like, what, how is this worth it? It's just so frustrating when you're right, but your client doesn't have, you know, the big pockets, right? Part of the reason I went to law school, I didn't know if I wanted to be a lawyer, but I knew I wanted a legal education because I, I, get, I get the court system, right? I will never be put in that situation just because I got a legal education. Dollar for dollar, right? Being in the middle of a, of a battle, mental warfare is a lot of fun. But just for the attorneys, it's, it's just not, right. it's just so draining unless, unless you have a huge war chest. And if you lose, it doesn't matter because it's not enough money to make you lose sleep, then you're fine. But for, that's, that's for the, the 1%. Everyone else in the world, just brutal. Yeah. I mean, just going through it myself has kind of helped re reshape um, a little bit of, of my own value system of as I scale and have employees, I'm sure there will be some specific instances in which, you know, I'll, I'll maybe have a non-compete for somebody that's really high up the totem pole, you know, that really, really understands my business. But, you know, a sales guy with a non-compete, look, if you can go and do it better than me, then go do it. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, uh, do, do your best to avoid a lawsuit. They're not fun. And like Brett said, he's really the only guy that gets to sleep at night in the middle of a lawsuit. So, and look, I, I would tell people too, here's the lesson. Don't sign a non-compete, but if you're an employee and, and they put it in front of you and it's signed it or don't have a job, you're going to sign it. Having really good contracts makes a big difference. Um, money is money. Being a different person makes a difference, but um, you know, then you've got the people that, that just, have a vendetta and they, and they, they want to throw money around cause they can. And so, you know, it sucks. <laughs> it, it, it does. But at the end of the day, what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. So, and, and, and that's the thing. And, and look, and you and I talked about this, like one day that's going to be over, we're going to come out of this and, um, and you're going to be off and running. So to me, if somebody spent all that money trying to hold me down, it's cause they were just terrified and threatened and, and a small person themselves. And so, you know, I mean, you know, you're, you're off and running. So that, that's what we always talked about and, and what's coming next and what I'm excited about for you. Yeah, no, I'm, I couldn't be happier with, uh, with being able to, to do the thing that I love. And I will say this too. Um, the other emotional thing that I forgot to mention really uh, in regards to the lawsuit, you know, when, when I was going through that, it wasn't necessarily that I was, you know, being, you know, attacked or going through a lawsuit. It, it was the fact that I had, totally identified something that I fell in love with and it was my passion. And then that thing gets attacked. And that's the thing that I think was probably more emotionally draining than anything was that th this is the thing that I love to do. And this is under attack now. And just after, you know, having quite a bit of time where I wasn't able to do the thing that I loved, I have a total, like just gratitude towards being able to do it again. So oh. that's oh. one thing I definitely wanted to mention. Yeah, you, you unfortunately have a different perspective because you, you had to go through something, right? But at yeah. the end of the day, I, it's going to make you better. As you said, it's going to readjust things for you. And it, it, it still is a really good economy right now for entrepreneurs to, yep. to be able to start a business, uh, unlike a lot and uh, most other countries. All right, Stu Parcells Academy. Who, who do you, who's your ideal client? Who are you focusing on? Who do you want to work with? So I honestly and genuinely enjoy working with just about anybody. Um, sales is kind of something that transcends sales. 
Um, it's something that, I mean, literally anybody can use to, I mean, talk their way out of a speeding ticket or get a date or whatever. And so um, I enjoy talking to just about anybody. My favorite industries though are um, because of my youth and my energy, um, I really like uh, hanging out with people um, that are uh, on the younger side, the millennials, the Gen Z or whatever. Um, I love working with people that are inside sales, um, that are making the phone calls. I love working with door-to-door -door people. I really love working with everybody um, as long as they have um, the, the will to get better um, because I know that I can help those people. And um, I think I've probably worked now within just about every industry that is out there. Yeah, I, I just stumble upon oh. people. Yeah, so basically... I own a business and I have a sales team. So I need somebody to train my sales team. That's, yep. that's most of what it is. Like Stu Parcells Academy, I'm going to hire and then put my team through the training, right? As far as, um, you know, what, what I really enjoy doing is working with the business owner, their sales manager, whoever is kind of uh, heading up the sales team, um, where first I identify the low hanging fruit. Um, you know, every sales office out there kind of has opportunities that they're maybe not aware of um, in regards to increasing sales, getting in front of more prospects and closing deals. So uh, first is identifying where those opportunities are. Second place um, then is implementing a process to capture those missed opportunities. And then the third piece is the ongoing skill development so that there's, there's always an uptick um, in sales. So um, that's what I really enjoy doing is working with teams um, and being involved in the implementation of more effective sales processes. You and I could probably chat all day. I especially like talking, you know, with you, you've got a lot of cool things going on, kind of a, a rebirth for you, but in the interest of keeping this video short, um, probably should wrap it up. But sure. what I want to do is, is um, play the video that I saw that you put out today. That's going to, I just love that video. It was really well edited. The music was great. So if, with your permission, we'll tag it on to the end of this so people can see more about Stupar Sales Academy and the kind of incredible things you're doing. And I wanted to cut you off to congratulate you on being on the Inc. 5000 list. I saw that. So hats off to you. That's a big achievement. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. That was a, a big goal and, and it's nice. It's nice to be there. It's a lot of, a lot awesome. of validation for providing value. So for sure. Um, thank you, my friend. And uh, with that, tell us how to contact you. How does someone reach out to Stupar Sales Academy? Yeah. You're interested in chatting with me directly. You can always email me js at jordanstupar.com. Uh, and if uh, maybe you're not quite there yet, you kind of want to get to know me a little bit. I'm pretty transparent and hyperactive on social media. Uh, you can find me at just about any platform at Jordan Stupar. And uh, I'm very, uh, um, what would you say, approachable. You can always message me and I'm happy to communicate with you there as well. Whether you've been forced to work remotely or from home or your mom's basement selling over screen share or you've been selling virtually for some time looking to take your sales presentation to the next level, I want to help you. My name is Jordan Stupar and as the founder of Stupar Sales Academy, I've had the opportunity to help thousands of salespeople increase their income, make more money, and of course, close more deals. I invite you to my mini masterclass, Screen Share Sales Secrets, where I'm gonna give you my blueprint that I've used to close well over $10 million with the sales over screen share to small, medium, and large companies like Sprint. All you have to do is enter your name and your email address, and I'm gonna give you free access to five sales lessons that will blow your mind and totally reconstruct your approach to selling online. I'll give you a bonus video, and if you act quick, I'll also give you a free ebook download that you can reference for your next sales pitch. Good stuff, buddy. Appreciate uh, your time. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.